All right. Um, okay, so I'll start with uh, the concept that we, we just got done with were what kind of things do fluids do when they're not moving? So like if you jump into a pool, there's pressure being applied to you. Um, when you have a confined fluid and you apply pressure, it's transmitted throughout the entire system like a tube of toothpaste. Um, that's where we did the hydraulic problems. And then uh, if something is ever submerged in or placed into a liquid, there's always an upward force called the buoyant force. Uh, this, this force is sometimes big enough to cause things to float and sometimes it's not big enough to cause things to float. So what we're gonna look at now is what happens to fluids when they get to moving. Now there's some really advanced physics stuff you can do with this, but like we're gonna just try to keep it very simple and talk about a basic principle. I need to grab a piece of paper here to show you my demonstration, okay? So this is gonna be a really dumb demonstration. All right, so our paper demo. Okay, so fluids can be liquids and gases. We're gonna deal with gases today, all right? On this piece of paper right here, I'm gonna kind of hold it so it's uh, facing downward like this, and I'm going to blow a steady stream of air over the top of the fluid or over the top of the paper, okay? Now, what's gonna happen is this paper is gonna magically rise up. We're gonna talk about that concept today to show you guys why that happens, okay? So, it, blow, it goes up. Um, this is a phenomenon that involves differences in pressures and a concept that we call Bernoulli's principle. So Bernoulli's principle is why you see that paper floating up when I blow a stream of air over it. So here's what Bernoulli's principle basically states, that if you have a high fluid speed, so if a fluid is moving very quickly, it will result in a low fluid pressure. Okay, high fluid speed equals low fluid pressure. And conversely, a low fluid speed will result in a high fluid pressure. So these things are inversely related. If a fluid is moving very quickly, you're going to have a low pressure associated with it. And vice versa, if a fluid is moving very slowly, you're gonna have a high pressure associated with it. This concept seems very very simple but it has so many it's used in our world in so many different ways i mean as dumb as this sounds this is the reason we can get airplanes that are very very heavy to fly in the air and we'll talk about how that is and what is the force that lifts that plane up okay so that's going to be our goal today so i'm just going to back this up so i can write on this so when you look at that paper, if that paper is hanging out like this, and I'll just draw this and we'll go blue, I'm blowing a fast stream of air, okay? So the airspeed is very high above the, air, above the paper, and the airspeed below the paper, because the air is just kind of hanging out, chilling down below, is very slow. What happens is, is that you get a pressure differential. This low airspeed is going to have a big air pressure. And this high fluid speed or airspeed is going to have a low air pressure. And in general, pressure goes from high to low. This is how the winds behave in our, in our atmosphere and whatnot. So what happens is, is that if the pressure below the paper is bigger than the pressure above the paper, what's gonna happen is, is that it's going to want to go there, so it lifts the paper up. Does that make sense? Thumbs up if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so that's the concept behind Bernoulli's principle. And it has lots of different uses and, lots, and it shows up in lots of different places in our world, okay? So the whole idea behind why does a plane fly the way it does and how do wings work, okay? So wings are kind of, uh, designed in such a way where you manipulate how the air travels over the wing versus under the wing. Um, wings are designed to have the air move a little bit farther over the top of the wing. 
And what happens is, is that that air wants to, because it has to move a little bit further, it's going to move a little bit faster. So the concept equals this. It equals a faster wind speed on top of the wing, which gives you a high speed and a low pressure. It is really weird to think that the thing that is lifting a plane into the air is literally the same air pressure that we experience right now. It's kind of weird to think of, okay? So how does that work with a wing? Well, let's say we have a wing. Most wings have lots of different designs. I'm gonna really exaggerate our wing for today. All right, I'm gonna draw it in black so you guys can see this. Okay, so we go here, all right? Go like that, all right? And we have some air. Just draw a few streamlines of air here. When it encounters the wing, this air underneath can just kind of go right, it just kind of cruises right underneath. But when it hits the top or this part of the wing, this air wants to meet up with this air right here, but it has to go further. It wants to meet up in kind of the same place at the same time. In order to meet up at the same place at the same time, because it has to go further, it has to go a little bit faster. And if it goes faster, that means above a wing is low pressure and below the wing is high pressure. So fast air, low pressure, slower air, higher pressure. And what happens is air is what lifts up that wing, air is what lifts up that plane. Kind of a weird concept. That's Bernoulli's principle. Does that make sense to you guys? Thumbs up if that kind of makes sense. Okay. Have you, I don't know if you guys have ever been on an airplane, okay? Because by your age, I had never been on an airplane. But one of the things that airplanes can do, especially like passenger airplanes, is that the wings can change shape a little bit. When you want to slow down in an airplane, so like one thing that I noticed uh, being on an airplane, like a lot of airplanes have wings at the bottom where they have these flaps, okay? They have these flaps at the back where it can, can extend out. They can throw these flaps up to help stop the plane when it's uh, coming to a stop or whatnot. But basically when an airplane lands, it doesn't want to land at 400 miles an hour, okay? It's got to slow down a little bit and you'll notice that as an airplane slows down. So as it slows down in the air, you still want to fly. So what it has to do is it has to apply these little flaps here so the air has to go even further so you can kind of magnify that. Um, the idea behind uh, lift force in a, in a wing is we have to be able to go fast enough to make this air differential a little bit different. So like we could slap some wings on Nicole right now on her arms and just have her take off running. Yes, thank you, Nicole. She's gonna take off running and she's not gonna be going fast enough to create this difference in air velocity, okay? Doesn't work that way. Sorry, Nikki. All right, just not going to have enough uh, enough uh, air pressure differential to do that. So you have to be kind of going fast. Um, so wings and lift are related to how fast you're going. That forward thrust. Okay. So that's Bernoulli's principle. That's the whole idea for today. Okay. So on a wing, the high pressure is below the wing, so it pushes it up and it lifts it into the air, okay? So where does this show up in our world, all right? Because it, it shows up in a lot of different places, okay? Um, a spoiler on a car. You know, uh, spoilers on cars, even though they look super rad and they're supposed to, uh, um, I don't know, basically what they do is they jack up your insurance rates, okay? I just let you guys know, especially if you're a dude. Uh, if you're a dude in your uh, teens or 20s, it's just going to increase your insurance rate. But a spoiler on a car is made to kind of be like an upside down wing. So instead of lifting the car up, it's trying to press the car down with the down force. Okay. So spoiler on a car, an actual spoiler that does that. Um, the mysterious closing door. Here's one of the things that I noticed in Sydney, moving from Omaha to Sydney. When I moved from Omaha to Sydney, I noticed that you could open your windows in your 
you could open your windows in the summertime because there's no humidity out here. That is not a concept in Omaha. It doesn't happen because it's so stinking humid all summer. If you do that, your house is going to be miserable. But in Sydney, because we don't have very much moisture, it cools down. So what we would do is we'd open up all the windows in our houses and whatnot. But here's the deal. Okay. And you guys have seen this. This has happened to you where, I mean, give me a thumbs up if a door has mysteriously slammed shut when the air has been going through your house. Thumbs up. You guys know what I'm talking about? So the idea is, is that when you have a door and air is traveling through it. So let me see if I, this is going to be such a bad drawing. I don't even know how I'm going to draw this. Okay. Opening. I don't know what, uh, okay, so here's our door, right? As air goes through and moves quickly, what happens is, our, do our door's gonna cl close this way, by the way, right? So as air moves through quickly, this has a low pressure, high speed, low pressure as it's moving through your house. Behind the door where the air's not moving as much, it's gonna have a high pressure. So what happens is, is it pushes on this door and as that opening gets more and more narrow, the speed goes faster and faster, the pressure differential increases and it slams the door on you. So one thing I notice is when I moved to Sydney is that I have to get, I have to put a lot of shoes in front of doors or I have to actually invest in some door stops. Okay. This is a um, uh, last one. Um, give me a thumbs up if you know what a, a riptide is. Let me know what a riptide is or rip current is. Okay. Those of you that were in Costa Rica that went to the other side of the island, I'm glad you didn't die in a riptide because that's, that's, that's why you weren't supposed to go to that beach. Now, did they have killer waves? Absolutely. It was fantastic. The waves were sweet. I might have snuck over there and checked it out. Whatever. Don't worry about it. But the, the whole idea behind a riptide and, how, and why they're so dangerous is because it's Bernoulli's principle, all right? So like along a coastline, you'll have water and you'll have like these weird currents. So a riptide is a current that goes very swiftly out to out in the middle of the ocean, all right? Uh, true story, my wife, when she was in Nicaragua doing a kind of a med school, um, delivering medicine, taking care of kids mission uh, through her med, med school class. Her and her one of her really good friends about died in a riptide. They had to go get rescued by some Baywatch, uh, some Baywatch lifeguard that was on the beach. Thank goodness uh, he was there uh, at that time. But the idea is this, if this water moves very quickly from the coast, so this is the beach, Okay, this is the ocean. If this water moves very quickly, this is a low pressure. And this water here, it's not moving as quickly as a high pressure. So what happens, what you have a tendency of doing if you ever go to the ocean is if you leave your stuff here and you walk straight out and you're out there for an hour, you are going to end up not where you walk straight out. You just have a natural tendency to drift out and then hopefully you avoid the riptide because it takes you out in the middle of the ocean before you know it they're very 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 bad okay so if you ever see a or on a beach and you see somebody driving that some life or driving on the beach and they have the announcement or you can't hear anything basically they're probably talking about a riptide okay so that's the idea behind Renewley's principle. Um, we're not going to do forces and liquids because we ain't got time for that. We do have time for that, but we don't care. Okay. So here is going to be your assignment, right? At some point by next week, um, I want you, and I'll post this on Classroom. This is so weak, but I love it. I want you to build two different paper airplanes. And I want you to record yourself throwing them and how they fly. Okay. Here's the goal. Our two paper airplanes. One, I want you to make more like a traditional airplane. By the way, if you don't want to make a paper airplane, you got time. You got YouTube. You got time. You can figure it out. Okay. 
one of your paper airplanes I want you to make like a traditional paper airplane with uh, smaller wings, okay? So what does that mean? Smaller wings, more of a traditional um, airplane here. I'm going to make one for you real quick here so you guys can see what the heck I'm talking about. Yes, this is how long it takes you to make a paper airplane. By the way, you can do any kind of flavor that you want. I don't care. Get on there and make some uh, very fancy paper airplanes here. Okay, so here's the first one I want you to do. A traditional paper airplane with smaller wings, more of an airplane, not a glider. Okay? So, you'll see that. Here, thumbs up if you understand what's going on here, okay? So I want you to chuck that one, right? That paper airplane. Notice how you have to throw this for distance and speed and all that stuff, right? That's paper airplane number one, okay? See ya. That was actually pretty good. Second airplane I want you to make is going to be more of a bigger wings, more of a glider, okay? Bigger wings glider. So what does this mean? All right. I'm going to slap together a really crappy one. This is the one that you're probably going to have to look up, guys. All right. A version of an airplane that's more like a glider. Um, so something that has this kind of feel to it. You guys see that? Bigger wings, glider. Okay. It's not done. I'm... Don't want to waste your guys' time making one of these. Um, but I want you to record yourself throwing that. Like I said, I will post online what I'm talking about here. Okay, I'm going to waste your guys' time because I'm going to make this little booger and I'm going to chuck it. Okay, this is really weak sauce. You have questions about... Make it a paper airplane. Have somebody make one for you. I don't know. Contact your little brother that uh, spends probably time making airplanes and not doing his IXL or whatever. I don't know. Shots fired. I'm kidding, Braden. I'm kidding. Okay. He didn't even hear you. He didn't? No, he's recycling his cans. He already drank the pop this morning, too. Clearly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, glider. Boom. Look at that. I got a quick question. Fire away. Where are you guys recycling your cans? Huh? Because I've been saving up my cans for days. So uh, Go to the park. park. Go to the park. Oh, okay. Park. You know what? The park or Safeway, whichever one you go to first. I think in, Safeway has a recycling cans in area. In Oregon, you can sell your cans for ten cents a piece. Yes, I'm making bank. Yes, you can. Maybe <laughs> take them to Oregon. Gas Maybe is I pretty will, cheap I now. Too many right now. Just drive them to Oregon. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, that's fair. I got do, time. Do you guys? Is that good? Are we good here? Yes. Literally, that's your assignment. I'm gonna post it on classroom. I'll try to explain for those people that didn't watch this. I'll try to post this as well. Okay. I'm going to hit stop recording here. Is